Right, today we are going to talk about neuromuscular junction diseases, diseases related with neuromuscular junction transmission, right? But before really we go to the pathology and diseases related with the neuromuscular junction, uh, I will br very briefly review the normal structure and function of neuromuscular junction. So that when you really understand the normal structure and function, then we'll talk about how different diseases affect at what site of neuromuscular transmission and junction, right? So what is neuromuscular junction? Where neurons make a junction with the muscle. Neuromuscular junction is a place where it is typically neuromuscular junction term is used when motor neuron, right? Nerve endings make connection or synaptic connection with the voluntary muscles. That is neuromuscular junction. So let's suppose here is your spinal cord, right? And of course, these are your spinal cord section I'm showing you here. And here is, yes, alpha motor neuron, its cell body. And this neuron is coming out and this is suppose nerve ending, right? Which is supplying a muscle. And let me draw a muscle here, right? And here, these are folds. Actually, they are special synaptic folds at neuromuscular junction. This is nerve ending, which is coming and controlling a myofiber, right? Now, the meeting point where nerve ending, end of the nerve, motor nerve, and the place where it is connected with the muscle, this structure is called neuromuscular junction. So what is neuromuscular junction? It's a very specialized miniature structure where neurons influence the contraction of the muscle. Now, how it really happens? First of all, the components of neuromuscular junction, this is presynaptic component. Is that right? This nerve ending is presynaptic component and this is post synaptic component right from here to here right and this is the gap between them this is called synaptic cleft right now uh, let's suppose this is my muscle fiber for my bicep right and this is the neuron coming now how this neuron controls by releasing the neurotransmitter acetylcholine so it means it must be having vesicles full of acetyl Choline, right? So this is acetylcholine. This is suppose acetylcholine molecules, and this is a vesicle. Look, there's no fun in telling that there are choline transporters here from GIT in your diet, in your food. Choline comes, and this is absorbed to the circulation, and then eventually choline goes to extracellular fluid, and choline uptakers, right? Uptake system. These concentrate the choline into motor nerve endings, and here is your mitochondria here now ending the mitochondria choline come from here and mitochondria provide the acetate acetate or acetyl coa and from here the choline come and there are an enzyme which uh, help the choline to fuse with acetate and make a neurotransmitter called acetyl choline and then there are special transporters here and these transporters they basically take acetyl choline and concentrate in these vesicles Right, so nerve ending is having acetylcholine, and this acetylcholine is coming from where it is being synthesized in the nerve ending from the choline and acetate. Right now, what really happens that let's suppose this is again I'm showing you another vesicle full of acetylcholine, and when action potential, action potential is just wave of depolarization followed by wave of repolarization when action potential arrives here right it means wave of depolarization arrives here it means when i say this wave of depolarization as you know in this neuronal system wave of depolarization is produced by influx of sodium influx of sodium so basically there is a wave of sodium influx right a wave of sodium influx arriving in the nerve ending and producing the depolarization of nerve ending. But when this nerve ending, right, it, it undergoes the process of depolarization at that very moment, depolarization sensitive, what? 
depolarization sensitive calcium channels open right those are also called voltage sensitive calcium channel so there are special calcium channels here and these calcium channels are called yes voltage sensitive calcium channel and these voltage sensitive calcium channels are called voltage sensitive because they are sensitive to voltage changes here again when wave of depolarization come right there is heavy sodium in flux when heavy sodium in flux occur in the nerve ending right the voltage sensitive calcium channels open and there is influx of yes there is influx of calcium and this calcium influx right when calcium is coming in and what this calcium is doing actually calcium is leading to calcium mediated fusion of choline acetyl choline vesicle with the nerve ending membrane how actually there are special proteins here uh, this is called on this this is called what are these synapto brevin these proteins are called synapto brevin and these proteins are present and some other similar proteins are present on the nerve on the vesicles right and at the nerve ending at the nerve ending there are other proteins and those proteins are present over here right when these proteins right these proteins are syntaxins and some similar proteins synapto this is synapto brevin these are syntaxin but they are not only two proteins there are many similar proteins many more and what really happens when calcium comes in calcium help synapto brevin to fuse with syntaxins and related proteins is that right normally let's suppose this is syntaxin and it is close like this at these dots calcium bind when calcium comes in it binds at these domains what really happens that these domains when they're loaded with calcium they repel each other they open like this is that right they open their mouth why because they are loaded at this point with the calcium and as soon as they open their mouth the stick goes in what is the stick synaptobrevin and when these two proteins lock with each other they undergo conformational change and pull the membrane off vesicle pull the membrane of vesicle and fuse it with the membrane of nerve ending right and what really happens then actually vesicle get fused with the nerve ending membrane neurolemma and at the fusion point a small hole is generated and through which what comes out yes acetyl choline this is how at neuromuscular junction presynaptic nerve endings release calcium and this release of calcium is a function of how many things are required a depolarization wave approaching stimulating the voltage gative calcium channels calcium influx then calcium mediated calcium mediated fusion of cholinergic vesicle with the nerve ending membrane and exocytosis of acetyl choline is that right in this way acetyl choline is released at what point synaptic cleft and of course here it is in high concentration there it is low concentration so it will diffuse from in the from high to low concentration within the synaptic cleft and approach post synaptic membrane which is basically folding of sarcolemma folding of muscle membrane let me make it more clear now these infolding right these are the infoldings of post synaptic membrane at neuromuscular junction and these points are called crest these are called crest right and these crest they are loaded with the receptors for acetyl choline because so acetyl choline has to go and influence the behavior of post synaptic membrane because these electrical signals right arrive here they release the chemical substance and these chemical substance should be bring 
electrical signals in the muscle membrane. So these are crest. Here there are at the crest there are special type of receptors, right? Let me draw one of the receptor, and this receptor is called cholinergic receptors. I will draw one receptor and magnify it, right? Actually, these receptors are ion channels. What are these? Ion channels, right? They are pentameric. They are made of. They are made of five subunits and these five subunits at two points there are two pockets and acetylcholine binds over here acetylcholine bind here and acetylcholine will bind here the moment acetylcholine bind with these acetylcholine receptors right these receptors can also be stimulated by nicotine can also be stimulated by nicotine so they are called acetylcholine receptors what type nicotinic type what type nicotinic type because uh, acetylcholine receptors are basically two type muscarinic type which can be stimulated by acetylcholine and muscarinic and acetylcholine receptors other type is nicotinic type which can be stimulated by acetylcholine as well as nicotine. nicotine so at the neuromuscular junction there are specialized cholinergic receptors which are nicotinic type is that right and these receptors are simply ion channels and when these channels receive the acetylcholine their central pore opens and cations go in including sodium and other cations move through this and this cationic influx there is a net there is net cationic influx positive charges move inside and positive charges move inside the resting membrane potential here become partially neutralized because resting membrane potential is negative let's suppose it is minus 90 millivolt we suppose but when sodium comes in right it becomes less negative maybe minus 50 or minus 40 and so and so forth and a small potential fluctuation is produced at this postsynaptic membrane due to acetylcholine arrival stimulation of acetylcholine receptors which are ion channel as soon as the ion channel open there's a heavy sodium influx or cationic influx and this lead to uh, it makes the resting membrane potential right less negative because of the arrival of positive charges it become minus from minus 90 it may become minus 80 minus 70 minus 60 so and so forth and membrane produces a local potential change this local potential which is produced here this is called end plate potential end plate potential and this end plate potential when it reaches to threshold it again stimulates <coughs> another type of when this area become when end plate potential is enough, this now stimulate voltage sensitive what sodium channels. Here, right now, actually, this is also sodium channel, this is also sodium channel, but this is acetylcholine of sensitive sodium channel, and this is voltage gated sodium channel. The neuromuscular junction acetylcholine sensitive sodium channels actually produce an end plate potential. If end plate potential is large enough or local potential is large enough, then it will stimulate the in the surrounding membrane voltage gated sodium channel and then heavy influx of sodium will set, will start the wave of depolarization on the muscle. And later on we will learn this wave of depolarization which spreads over the muscle sarcolemma through the T tubules, it goes in and then eventually it releases calcium in the muscle cytosol and then calcium mediated contraction of the muscle occur actin myosin sliding is that right in this way electrical activity in this membrane eventually convert into mechanical activity electromechanical coupling we will discuss into another another lecture so right now we have just discussed what is there this presynaptic membrane there is synaptic left and there is post synaptic membrane presynaptic membrane is the nerve ending of motor neuron post synaptic membrane is muscle membrane sarcolemma presynaptic membrane releases acetylcholine due to calcium dependent influx oh, voltage gated calcium channel produce influx of calcium and calcium dependent exocytosis of acetylcholine and then cholinergic receptors here and these receptors produce when they are activated they produce cationic influx and produce what yes end plate potential and this end plate potential eventually leads to what action potential here
Now, this process is called neuromuscular transmission. Why we call it neuromuscular transmission? Because information is transferred from neuron to the muscle, right? What kind of information? Action potential comes on the neuron, is that right? This is electrical signal come on the neuron, releases acetylcholine which is the chemical signal and this chemical signal produces electrical changes in this membrane and eventually again electrical signal or action potential is produced here. So in this way signal from the neuron is transferred to the signal to the membrane. Whole this process is called neuromuscular transmission. Now this was the basic. Another thing before I really go to detail of the diseases here as acetylcholine uh, receptors are present and acetylcholine work on these receptors after that acetylcholine is destroyed because acetylcholine should choline should not stay here forever otherwise what will happen you will contract it and it will remain contracted and then you will ask your girlfriend please open this this is very uh, pathetic situation for a man so what happens that as soon as acetylcholine come it should produce a signal here and muscle should contract but then acetylcholine should be removed from here or destroyed. For this purpose, there are special enzymes here which destroy the acetylcholine and these enzymes are called <coughs> yes these are called acetylcholinesterase. These are enzymes which are present at within the neuromuscular junction and this enzyme is called acetylcholinesterase because what they do they destroy the acetylcholine. Is that right? And if you really want more action, right, what will happen? You have to produce, release more acetylcholine. For example, if I do like this and then release, it means whatever acetylcholine was produced, it produced the action and then it was destroyed by acetylcholine nestrase. But if I keep it contracted, what does it mean? There is a constant release of signals and constant release of acetylcholine even though it is acetylcholine and even though uh, Acetylcholine is coming, producing action, being destroyed, but for sustained action, the more and more is coming. Is that right? So, this is the basic structure of neuromuscular junction.